Hey there everyone, I'm Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Ben 10 Retrospectives. And as the first episode of the new year, we're going to be looking at what the DVDs say is the first episode of Season 3 and Episode 27 of the original Ben 10 series, Midnight Madness. And at the beginning of the episode, Ben, Gwen, ben, Gwen and Max are going to this giant mall, which has pretty much everything. It's got a crap ton of stores, a crap ton of movie theaters, an indoor roller coaster, a lot of restaurants. It's pretty much its own town. It's even called a metropolis or whatever. Mega Mall. Op yeah, it was called Mega Mallopolis. And it's so big that it even has its own police, its own, its security. It's, it is actually a police force. And they see them in action as there's a robbery there. Ben, of course, goes to confront it. It's a, it's a couple of old people who somehow know Kung Fu. But the but the police ultimately catch up with them and assume Ben's with the robbers, so they chase after him. And when he go, runs into the rust bucket, the police chase it down, causing it to crash. And so the Tennysons are now stuck at the mall until Max gets the parts to fix everything. So, but anyway, <clears throat> while they're at the mall, they are visit. They Gwen, Ben and Gwen come across a a stage show, a stage show pretty much for a hypnotist. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm. Trying to get closer, for a hypnotist called Sublimino, who's pretty much this short guy with a long red overcoat who just kind of with the voice of Billy from Billy and Mandy, or well, yeah, yeah. Ben Ben is forced to volunteer by Gwen as a dare, but while up there, the hypnotism seems to work as Sublimino seems to hit a button on his watch that causes all the volunteers, Ben included, to actually do exactly what he says, but Gwen pulls Ben off stage when Subliminal's next order to Ben is to for him to be an alien, and since for Ben that's very literal, he is about to go for the Omnitrix, but... So, of course, Gwen takes advantage of how of Ben being suggestible, but by using him, by be, having him be her indentured servant, but the next day, Ben is acting, is feeling tired, he thinks that he, he doesn't feel like he, got, he didn't get much sleep, but while looking around, one of the rides in the mall seems to have been vandalized as the engine was stolen, and the only evidence that the police have is a shard that looks like it came from Diamond Head. Ben, of course, doesn't know what... Does, ben, Max and Gwen, of course, assume that Ben did it himself, but Ben says he's clueless. But then that night, Ben gets up, and without say, saying a word to Gwen or Max, though Gwen is woken up by Ben hitting the floor, he transforms into Upgrade and runs out and runs out of the RV. He then heads up on top of the mall, and strangely enough, the police of this place seem to Im almost immediately respond before Ben can do anything. I don't really know how. I don't really know how. I, they, I guess they tighten security. I don't know, but they have a plane already in place. They got a bunch of squad cars there, and they all and they're pretty much going after Ben. But Ben manages to subdue not only take down, manages to subdue them, not kill them, but he manages to subdue. The, the plane, and then he merges with this giant clock, which was on the front of the mall, and makes it and flies away on it. And it turns out that yes, Sublimino is the one controlling him, though you could have probably guessed it. And Sublimino is just kind of going along with the fact that he is controlling aliens, because he even mentions the fact that he saw Diamond Head the day before, and now Upgrade. I don't know. He doesn't see the connection between them and Ben, which I kind of get, but I at least suspect he would probably. But I'm just kind of wondering why he doesn't real why he doesn't get realize it though he cl does clearly say in the episode that he doesn't it doesn't really matter as long as they do what he says so I guess it's just a case of don't give horse in the mouth but I'm getting off topic so Gwen and Ma so Gwen and Max just assume Ben is sleepwalking so they do everything they can to keep him awake but the next night despite their efforts Ben does fall asleep and Sublimino takes control of him again only this time Ben goes heat blast and he and the other volunteers steal a bunch of change from a heart chains from one, from one, a hardware store at the mall, which Ben melts down into a giant metal into a giant metal pole or whatever. And I, I don't know when this happens. I'm assuming that Ben, that Gwen and Max saw the other volunteers, and so they're able to p to piece everything together. But they figure out that Subliminal is the one that's pulling all the strings. I don't know. Again. There's no aha moment. They just ultimately they just find out in the next. They just seem to know it in the next scene. But of course, they're unaware of the fact that they don't know what's going on. So they don't know what Subliminal wants all this stuff for. So Max tries to warn the mall representative, the, the small representative who keeps appearing at, in news reports after all of these incidents with the same phrase of "This is an isolated incident." 
The mall will be open for business. Customer safety is our number one priority. And he continues to say that over and over, which for some reason does not tip Max off that this guy is being controlled by some limino. But when Max goes to meet up with Ben, ben Gwen meets up with them and handcuffs Ben's hands together so that he can't use the on the trick so he can't reach it. But at that point, we see what Subliminal's plan, plan is. He's been actually assembling a giant clock in the middle of the giant clock in the middle of the mall which is linked up to his pocket watch and he uses that to pretty much hypnotize everyone in the mall except ben who had the smart idea of not looking at the clock and so pretty much every person in the mall becomes his slave and begins looting the place ben manages to go to a key place and instead of actually getting a key made because that'd be wasting time he just breaks off the handcuffs and goes alien he starts trying to reach subliminal and subliminal realizes that there's uh, this he goes, um, he, there's this alien running around the mall that's not doing what he wants, so he sends everyone after them, ben, Gwen and Max included. Ben manages to get through the mall, but eventually, and he eventually reaches Sublimino, and well, uh, he meant, but, and Ben ultimately ha it starts holding him over a rail because yeah, I think he was about to fall off of it, I don't know. But just when Ben is holding him over it, the Omnitrix times out, and Ben not being able to hold on to Sublimino, they, bo they both fall onto the clock. Sublimino is about to try and hypnotize Ben again, but the clock manages to move fast. One of the clock hands moves fast enough that Ben is able to get the watch, and Ben undoes the, the hypnotize, undo does everyone's hypnotized states and reverts them back to normal, at which point Ben keeps the watch later, so... Anyway, yeah, I just kind of spoiled the episode rotten, and before I'm going to start, I want to say this now. This episode is all right. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. This episode's just all right. It's I kind of want to say it's a breather episode, but from what I can but from what I've heard, this was not the, uh, the episode that originally aired first in season 3. I could be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong because again, I'm going by the DVD order. So even, so if it's out of the so if it's out of place then I then uh, then I don't then it's not going to be then it's not so it, then it's out of place. That's just how the DVDs list them. So, and, and in some cases I know of that because I will be encountering that later. But I'm just sticking a period of the DVDs. So I w so I don't really have to think of it as a breeder episode. But and again, it's not bad, but it isn't really one of my favorites. It's just an okay episode. Like I because I think what may, how it helps make it work is. Well, just kind of seeing the hypnotized people because it is genuinely disturbing. Because when Be when Sublimino hypnotizes them, he hits a button on the watch. It sh shoots out these waves. It shoots out all these waves that hypnotize people once they see it, and of course, and just seeing them being so, just seeing them acting without any sh sign of emotion, without just doing all the just doing all this stuff without mu without any hesitation. It actually is pretty creepy and just what adds to that is just seeing ben fall under this because again ben is ben being one of his volunteers being one of his volunteers is now under his control and so he's using his aliens to get all this stuff but of course sublimina and it, it, just, it is just kind of distur it is just rather creepy and even the the ending where the entire mall is just going after ben is just more disturbed more disturbing because we know Ben has to be careful with what he does because they're all just hypnotized people that have no idea what they're doing, and so Ben has to f has to deal with fending them off while also making sure no one gets hurt. Well, majorly because he does gas a group of old people that tried to hit him with chainsaws. But I think, ironically, the thing that kind of works against this episode is the villain Sublimino, which I don't think he's all. I don't think of him as awful. But he's not very. I don't. I don't. Really, it's just. I don't really like him that much. I'm sorry to say. Like I think his major flaw with me is that. Well, first let me. First I'll just list the positives. I think as the villains go, this guy does have is ha has it all together. Well, at least in how he executes his plans. Because his big plan is just to hypnotize people. Because he's a master hypnotist, and he's his big plan is just to hypnotize everyone into being his army of robbers i suppose i don't know i think i mean yeah, hypnotized army is creepy enough on its own and you can and you can do a lot of stuff be able to do a bit of stuff with that as that they can probably pretend to be normal people though if they're if it's subliminal and they just do this then odds are that they wouldn't be able to pass for anything but he does seem to have it well all together like he knows how he's a what he wants to implement his plan he has anyway he knows who to utilize and how to do it 
And even, yes, the watch, just the fact that he was able to make that does show that he actually can, that he is at least technically, technologically skilled. Even, even going so far as to get the head of the mall under his control so that he can get away with all this. I, but I think his major problem is that he doesn't really have a presence. He's not, like, he's not, which I, even the episode makes fun of, which it is sort of amusing. Like, his first in, like, his intro is him arriving on his stage, there's smoke going off, but he, like, just usually how a, a, sta a showman kind of gets their intro, but he starts coughing on the gas, and then he trips over his own coattails. It is, it is amusing in a way, and they do have make some jokes at his expense, but I might as well say this right now, he's a little person. Little person, and that really combined with his voice, and even the constant jokes don't re don't really kind of paint a good picture of a villain. It's like he wants to be intimidating. He's trying to be intimidating. It's just that he doesn't fully succeed. And in this case, it doesn't work to his advantage. Because, again, there are some... Because there are he does have a good plan. It's just that he himself isn't very entertaining. And I mentioned how his intro was him just looking funny. All Most of it... Throughout the rest of the episode, he doesn't seem to have that a lot. Like, there, it, it, like even the, mo the closest thing I can think of is just near the end of the episode. But all the rest of the episode is just trying to have him be this serious villain. I think I can I, th I think aside from his intro and just like one other scene, it's just it's just trying to make him out to be so someone intimidate. It just makes it it makes it feel like he's w trying to be intimidating, but he's not really succeeding in that regard. He's just not that entertaining as a villain. I'm sorry to say. And. Again, if someone if people like Subliminal, I'm not going to I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to be a jerk and say that it's wrong to like him, but I personally didn't and as and as such, I don't think it really helped this episode that that well, but again, on, but again, on the whole, I don't think it was a bad episode. It was just an okay one. I, I don't know if I ever continue, if I keep watching it. Again, but again, I think if you do enjoy it and more more power to you, and I do still think there are some nice things in here. So, yeah, on the whole, like, yeah, an okay episode, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Hey, okay, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this very poorly lit episode, which I will hopefully get enhanced in YouTube. I am Samuel Johnson, and tune in next week where we look at the. What I th what I think is the first episode of season three, and one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite episodes, and you could probably guess why, if you've seen the show at least. So yeah. Anyway, so I'm Sam Johnson. Thank you for watching, and I will see you then. Take care.